First up on the list is Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Back in 2001, a sequel to one of the first proper first-person shooters came out. Wolfenstein 3D was groundbreaking in its own right, but the release of Return to Castle Wolfenstein deeply impressed many people. Not only did the game have an immersive single-player campaign that combined a story-driven World War II experience with horror elements, the included multiplayer blew many people away. At the time, online multiplayer was not at all as established as it is today. The new Wolfenstein included objective-based, team-oriented gameplay and iconic settings. You had different classes, awesome maps that were pretty big for the time, and there was a big clan culture that developed around it. A few years later, there was a plan to release an expansion for the game called Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. However, due to issues with the single-player campaign, the multiplayer side of the game was eventually released for free as a standalone release. This game was also hugely popular at the time. Up to this day, the game still has dedicated fans. There exist active fan-run projects to keep the game alive, such as E.T. Legacy. The second game on the list is Commandos 2, Man of Courage. Even though the original released in 1998, the two sequels came out in the early 2000 time period. I used to love these games so much, but if I have to pick one, it's Commandos 2. The Commando series are isometric stealth games in which you control a group of allied special forces and you have to think very tactically in order to complete missions. Your unit consists of different characters with different skills and abilities. For instance, there's a spy who can disguise himself as an enemy officer, and there's a sniper who can climb telephone poles in order to take out targets. Together with all of the weapons and tools you can use, this makes for very engaging gameplay. Up to this day, these games still have many fans. If you played Commandos back in the day, you'll be happy to know that HD remasters of these games are available on Steam. Also, as a quick recommendation, if you enjoy these games, there's actually a relatively new game that came out a couple of years ago, which has very similar gameplay. It's not World War II, and it's set in feudal Japan, which is also an awesome setting, but the gameplay is very similar, so check out Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun. Next up on the list is the sequel to one of the game series that introduced me to the hardcore tactical shooter genre, and that is Hidden and Dangerous. Even though Part 1 came out in 1999, Part 2 came out in 2003. I still remember playing Part 1 as a kid and not being able to get past the first level as it was so difficult, but man, was it immersive. In a sense, it's a bit similar to Commandos, as you control a group of Commandos in this game too. However, instead of an isometric perspective, you played in third or first person. The game follows the SAS, the British Special Forces, during stealth operations behind enemy lines in World War II. This sequel improves on the systems of its predecessor and includes missions in a variety of locations, from Norway to Libya to France to Czechoslovakia. Even though the game is rather buggy, the pros far outweigh the cons. The game is very ambitious with its stealth mechanics like stealing enemy uniforms but also vehicle control, so it definitely belongs on this list. The next game is very famous as it's one that took the story-based FBS genre to the next level. Medal of Honor Allied Assault. I remember being in elementary school and a classmate showed me Saving Private Ryan for the first time. As a little Dutch boy, I was deeply impressed, as well as Scarred for Life. I've always wanted to be able to play something like that, but when the movie came out, there was only the old Medal of Honor on the first PlayStation. A few years later, when Allied Assault came out, it made it possible for players to experience a Saving Private Ryan or Band of Brother-like experience in a convincing way in a video game. For many people, this was mind-blowing. From the opening scene on the beach map to the small countryside towns in Normandy and even submarine bases, the single-player campaign was very varied and extremely immersive to play. There was also an online multiplayer included that some people actually still play today. I enjoyed the online play, but at the time I was more into Wolfenstein. Not long after Allied Assault came out, another World War II FPS with a fantastic single player entered chat. Even though Medal of Honor was already amazing, Call of Duty even took it a few steps further. Where other games, including Allied Assault, had the player be like a godlike, invincible super soldier, Call of Duty did the opposite. Instead of being a one-man army, you were part of a larger war, and the friendly infantry around you played a larger role. Call of Duty 1 included three campaigns that followed the US, the British and the Soviets. I can still remember playing the Soviet campaign for the first time and entering Stalingrad over the Volga River. It was very reminiscent of the movie Enemy at the Gates, a mind-blowing experience. It also had immersive details like being able to aim down your sights, and it just felt more refined than other games in genre. 
Call of Duty was actually developed by a lot of people who also worked on Allied Assault. We all know what became of Call of Duty nowadays and all of the successes that it enjoyed along the way. It's a shame Medal of Honor couldn't keep up. Shooters and strategy games were not the only types of World War II titles that came out in the early 2000s. One of the most iconic World War II flight sim series also can be traced back to this time. 2001 saw the release of IL-2 Sturmovic. While the game is still doing well on Steam and this series in general is one of the most highly acclaimed World War II flight sim series, it's not exactly the same version. IL-2 has had long-term support as well as a dedicated fanbase and multiple generations of these games came out. Over the years, the game engine has changed as well. So, the edition that you see on Steam today is actually a contemporary edition, even though you can still play the old versions. So if you're looking to get into an authentic World War II flight sim that spans across all theaters of war with planes from all important nations, don't look further. Going back to first-person shooters, there's another one that really can't miss on this list. And we're talking about Battlefield 1942. Coming out in 2002, this game really changed up the gaming landscape and really showed what potential video games can have. A large player count, full-blown war game that includes infantry combat as well as vehicular combat on the land and even sea and air. It's a game that many players had always dreamed of. Battlefield 1942 made this fantasy a reality. It had awesome maps, of which some are still popular up to this day in later battlefields such as Wake Island. If you hear the soundtrack, it immediately takes you back in time. The expansions for the game, The Road to Rome as well as Secret Weapons of World War II, added a bunch of content to the game as well. So what's your favorite battlefield? Next up is one of my favorites, Sudden Strike and its sequel Sudden Strike 2. These games are amazing. I always thought it was called an RTS, but these days an RTS without the base building and resource management is apparently called a real-time tactics game, which makes sense. This is certainly the case for the Sudden Strike games, as these give you an army and you have to make do with what you've got. Basically use it as effectively as possible. There do exist ways to get reinforcements, but not in the traditional sense like many RTS games of that period, such as Age of Empires or Command & Conquer Red Alert. Sudden Strike 1 and 2 are set in a realistic depiction of World War II. What makes it so cool is that you can micromanage units in interesting ways. You have to man anti-tank guns with infantry, and you can transport these guns by hanging them behind trucks. Ammo can actually be depleted, so you have to think about your logistics. The line of sight of units is very important, as tanks can't see much over a long distance. So there's infantry units with binoculars that can help out. I love the missions in the game, but there was even a map editor included that I used extensively when I was younger. If you're looking for a deep tactics game, check this out. There's actually a pretty good way to experience a modern game with this style of gameplay, despite not being exactly the same thing as they turned down the skill quite a bit. Sudden Strike 4 actually came out in 2017, so it has fairly up-to-date graphics. For number 9 on the list, I want to take a few steps back to Medal of Honor again. I mentioned Medal of Honor Allied Assault that came out on PC, but the franchise had some very good games on the consoles too, and they do deserve a spot on this list in my opinion. One of my favorites is Medal of Honor Underground. Despite the PlayStation 2 releasing in the same year, this game still came out for the PS1. Like the later games, Underground was an objective-based shooter that told a story, and this time it focused on a member of the French Resistance during World War II. They got recruited by the US intelligence services. Medal of Honor Underground was certainly not the only good Medal of Honor that came out on the consoles. I bet many of you have great memories of Medal of Honor Frontline too. The graphics certainly do look a whole lot better. This was basically the Medal of Honor game for people who couldn't afford an expensive PC. And it was definitely a really good experience on the consoles. I played the split screen version a lot on my friend's GameCube, spending nights trying to snipe each other. Have you played Frontline? If so, what do you think of it? So another shooter that really can't miss on this list is Day of Defeat. Just like its brother, Counter-Strike, Day of Defeat was a hugely popular mod for Half-Life set in World War II. The original mod came out in 2000 and only featured an online multiplayer. I still remember playing the awesome team-based maps and just screwing around with all of the weapons with my high school friends doing LAN parties at home. Despite many games at the time being quite fast-paced, Dave Defeat had pretty heavy recoil, a stamina bar as well as the inability to fire during running and jumping, so it gave it a bit more authentic feel. Still, if you play it today, it feels arcadey compared to modern games such as Hell at Loose or Post Scriptum. Eventually Valve bought the rights to the game and hired the modding team. They released a standalone version in 2003. 
The game is still played today in its current form, which is Dave Defeat Source. So if you want to give this old one a shot with relatively new graphics, check it out on Steam. Another real-time tactics game that is worth trying is Blitzkrieg. This game is very similar to Sudden Strike in many ways, but it has a larger focus on micro with smaller number of units to control. The game includes three campaigns, one for the Allies, the Germans and the Soviets. These campaigns differed in an interesting way from Sudden Strike because there was a degree of persistency in the game. The units that stayed alive gained experience and carried over into the next missions, so it was worth trying to keep them alive. If you're looking for a fun strategic and tactical game to get into, definitely check this out. As you can see, the graphics still hold up pretty well in this day and age. Finally, the last game on the list started out as a groundbreaking mod that was released for Unreal Tournament 2003 and 4, and it's called Red Orchestra. This mod introduced some interesting new concepts to the wonderful world of World War II shooters. Where other games focused on a more arcadey experience, Red Orchestra went all in on realism. A limited HUD, no crosshairs, there wasn't any ammunition counter, also the time to kill was extremely quick. This didn't only generate interest from players, but the mod won awards and eventually was released standalone as well as spawn a game series. Lots of influences from this mod also found their way into other realistic military games. If you want to play some of the older Red Orchestra related Rising Storm games, it's pretty hard to find players nowadays. You can still try Rising Storm 2 Vietnam as it has quite a few players and very similar gameplay. So that was my list. Of course, there were loads of other good World War II games during that period, such as Spencer's Phase 1 for example, but I didn't want to make the list too long. You guys must have some opinion because it's the internet. Are there any games missing on the list? What games did you play back in the day? Let us know in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and subscribe for more. Depending on the success of this video, I might make one for the late 2000s as well. Cheers.